Hello, my name is Frederick and welcome to another Maya to Blender tip video. Today we will be talking about collections and what they are and what they are not compared to Maya. A side topic of this video is also going to be the outliner because we're going to use the outliner quite a bit to explain the collections. Now, when you're using Maya, you're probably very familiar with the outliner. Blender's outliner works very similar. It has a couple of differences, but the main idea of the outliner is the same. Let's talk about collections. Uh, when I started using Blender, I was really confused by collections. I always thought they were something like groups because they belong in the hierarchy, but they didn't really do what I thought they would do. They, for example, they don't have a transform. And that's a really big difference with Maya. In Maya, when you create a group, it gets its own transform. You can put things underneath it. And then when you move the group, everything in the group moves around in your scene. In Blender, collections do not have a transform. And therefore, you cannot use a collection to start grouping things together, to move them together and animate them. So the first time I started using collections, I was like, what the hell is going on? I can't really do what groups do. But collections don't really have the same function as groups. They are different. So let's dive in and explain how collection works. As you can see, when you start up a new scene, you get like scene collection and then a sub collection or it is just called collection. Collections, you can imagine that they are like a basket. Blender stores everything into a database. The database is kind of a, a big pool of objects. It's not really structured as such as we think it is. So it's a, it's a pool. It's like how most databases work anyway. But to make sense all of this, as humans, we need those collections. So we have a basket where we can put things in. The main basket is called the scene collection. Now, when we go into scenes, we have to explain a little bit what a scene is. Now, up here, you got a little widget and it's called also scene. And when you use the pull down menu, you're going to see that there's only one scene. Now you can create a new one, for example, it's like so. You're going to see that there is nothing in your scene anymore. And there's only a scene collection and uh, there's no objects, no lights, no cameras anymore. That's because a scene is a sort of complete environment encapsulated separate from other scenes. This can be really convenient if you want to use multiple setups and multiple scenes in the same file. Now you can always go back and then you're going to see that your camera and your light is still there. And if you go to the other one, it isn't there. Now you can still put other objects into uh, this scene from the other scene, but that leads us too far. I'm, this is not a video about scenes, so I just want to illustrate the idea what scenes are so that scene collections make sense. So let's get rid of this scene. Uh, it's not important to us. So we have a scene collection. That is the main basket of our objects. Then you can see that we have also a sub collection. When we start Blender, usually there's the camera, the light, and there's the default cube, which I kind of deleted uh, up front. And they're all part of this collection. Now we can also create by right clicking in the outline or create new collections. And you can see that you can stack collections underneath each other and they form a hierarchy. Now, mind you again, that collections do not have a transform, so you cannot use them to make certain hierarchies that you can move around. But you can make sub collections in, for example, let's say you want to build a village, you can make a top collection, which is called village. And then underneath it, you can make a sub collection, which is a house. And then you can make multiple houses, for example. And you're gonna see later on why this can be really convenient. As you can see, you can nest uh, collections, but you can also put them outside and put them part of the scene collection. So it does work a little bit like groups where you can put things in groups, put them out. But there is a very interesting difference. For example, if you have an object over here, and I will uh, demonstrate this with the light. So when you go to the object properties, you can notice that there is a collection tab here. And we can actually put 
items in multiple collections. So I can put the light into the first collection and I can put it into another collection. But this can be interesting if, for example, a certain object needs to be part of one group but also of another group. So it, it and it's not parenting because parenting is still another thing where you can actually really parent something underneath uh, an object. But this is uh, putting it kind of in two baskets at the same time. So I have a light and I put it in the left basket and in the right basket. For this demonstration, I'm, I'm not using that to demonstrate what collections are. So let's get rid of the light in this particular collection. And you're gonna see that's still there. So let's create a little scene which can demonstrate what we wanna do with collections. So first of all, we're gonna rename this the cam collection. So we're gonna leave the camera in there. We're gonna make this the lights. And we can check that over here. As you can see, if you drag and drop, it's gonna actually take it one out and put it in the new collection so it doesn't duplicate it the way I did uh, down here with the add collection. So then let's create another collection, which is a geo EMV, which is gonna be the environment, and then create another collection, which is the geo character. Obviously we have to populate this. Let's create an environment and as you know, if you watch more of my videos, I always use really simple geometry just to demonstrate things because I think lovely, intricate geometry like real characters and stuff like that kind of take away from what I want to explain. So I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to use a plane and our character is going to be a cube. There you go. I'm going to make the plane a little bit bigger. There you go. Now let's set up the camera as well. So select the camera and we can connect the camera to the viewport. So when we move the camera, it's actually gonna move with it. So uh, there you go. This is all very simple just to demonstrate a principle. Obviously you're never gonna use planes and cubes that simple to uh, make up your scene. It's, it's gonna be really boring if you do that. D don't do that. So I have divided everything up here in a cam collection, lights collection, geo environment collection, and the geo character. Now let's give our cube as well a quick shader so it stands out a bit. Let's put red in here. And uh, oh, that's pinkish. I don't want pink, I want more red. There you go, that's red. And as you can see, it's just gray. And that's because we have selected the viewport shading to be simple gray. If you want to see some color, we can go to this one or since I have a RTX card and it renders really fast, I'm going to go to this particular scene. And uh, this uses cycles to render out a quick version of this. Let's quickly change something here as well. I'm going to put the max samples down here. So when we render something out, it's going to be really quick. I use my GPU, by the way, to compute this because the RTX cards are extremely fast. Uh, I do recommend them if you like to work in Blender. As you can see next to all this stuff are some properties. And the interesting part is that if you use the take the drop down filter options, you can add in some more. And I do recommend you activate these if you start rendering your scene. And as you can see, there's quite a bit more. And I'm gonna explain them as well because it's part of the outliner, but it does make sense if you're using collections uh, the right way. So as you can see, collections have a checkbox. The checkbox is, is not part of any objects. So collections have their own particular checkbox. And this checkbox is used for excluding it from the view layer. So if I, uncheck this, you're going to see that our cube, our main character, is disappeared from the scene and is not in the view layer anymore. That begs us to explain view layers, of course. So as you may have noticed next to the scenes, you see the view layer option and there's also a drop-down menu, so it looks a little bit like scenes, and you can create a second view layer. 
And it's kind of like a sort of render layer where you can set up things differently. So for example, if I disable it in the main view layer, but if I go to the other view layer, you're gonna see that it's still disabled there. So all these options are individual for each view layer. Again, this is not a video about view layers, so let's keep it to one view layer. But as you can see, it can be really interesting to create a kind of layered system that you can render out and then uh, use a compositing package or Blender itself to composite your layers. Now, if you have multiple objects in your collection, everything is, gonna, is going to disappear. Yeah, so to demonstrate that, maybe we can add a companion sphere. There you go. The cube does like a little bit of companionship. Let's give this one a uh, green color. There you go. And give this some smooth shading because the cube likes smooth. And uh, there you go. The sphere is now created outside the Geo character collection. So if I turn this off, you're going to see that the cube is going to disappear, but the sphere isn't. But since we like the sphere to be part of the geometry group, we can add it in. And as you can see, it is part of it. Then you got the disable selection button which is really interesting because now I cannot select the sphere or the cube. When you do it in the collection, it kind of overrides everything in that collection, which is kind of convenient. Then you can also turn things invisible. For example, I can make the characters invisible. And that is only for the viewport. So it's a tempor temporary invisibility. But the objects are still there. And if you go, for example, to the render tab and you do a quick render, uh, you're going to see you have the camera just showing the cube and the sphere as if they are visible. So next to the hide viewport, there is the disable in viewports. And hiding and disabling is slightly different. Now, the effect is the same, to be honest. Now, we also have disable in renders, and that can be really convenient because you can put it in the viewport, but once we start rendering, it kind of disappears. That way you can put things in there as a reference in your viewport, but leave them out out of your renders. And they don't have an influence on that render. For example, if I do this, you're gonna see that the plane doesn't have any shadows of the sphere and the cube. There's no color bleeding going on. Uh, so they're really not rendering. Collections have something extra that objects don't have because you can always disable like one object. But as you can see, there's a little sphere here and there's a little arrow here. Now the sphere is really interesting because it's a holdout mask. If I click that, you're gonna see that the objects in that collection are being cut out and leaving a transparent part uh, visible. And if you want to create something with a holdout mask, this is really the way to do it. As you can see, they still generate shadows and they still generate color bleeding. So the objects are there, but they aren't, they are being cut out. Now, if you don't want to cut them out, but just want to have the background, then there's the indirect only switch. And you can um, see the shadows and the color bleeding, but the objects are not there, but it do, they don't cut anything out. All right. So these options give you really flexibility when you're doing compositing by not rendering or by using a holdout or uh, anything else. And it, so especially when you're using view layers, this can be really interesting because uh, every view layer can have its own setup and that way you can render everything in layers and put everything together again in the composite. So this gives a little overview of what you can do with collections and which extra properties they have that certain objects do not have. Um, but there's also, when you select, a, you can see that when you select a, a collection, there's also a little collection tab here. Basically, it's the same options you have over here. The selectable, disable in renders. The disable in viewport is not in this part. Then you have the holdout and the indirect only. 
So these are the basics of collections. So to give a quick uh, recap, collections are not groups. They don't have a transform. You can put multiple objects in collections, but you can also put one object in multiple collections. Collections do have like a sort of group function uh, where they kind of order override everything that's underneath them, but they're really interesting for organizing your scene. When you're rendering and using view layers, you can actually use holdout masks or use indirect light only. That is a real strength of collections in Blender. And if you like this video, give it a fat thumbs up by clicking the thumbs up button once. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so because that motivates me to make more videos. So that's it for this video and I'll see you the next time. Bye.